everyone, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham and we're venturing beyond the Earth's atmosphere this week, investigating the UAE's ambitions to send the first Emirati astronaut into space. From more than 4,000 applicants, the finalist has been chosen. Stay tuned to find out more about him and his milestone mission, which will take place in five months' time. But first... The UAE space program could be described as bold and plans range from new Earth observation satellites to the building of an Emirati human colony on Mars. And to help develop these projects, the country has rapidly built a network of international partnerships, as Jeremy Wilkes reports from Paris. The Middle East has a long tradition of science and astronomy. Just take a look at this 14th century astrolabe used by Islamic scholars to study the movement of the stars. And now in the collection here at the Observatory of Paris. This is a product of the so-called golden age of Islamic astronomy. But looking at the Middle East now, it appears that a new golden age may be on the horizon. The French were quick to embrace the opportunities of the Emirati space program. The country's space agency, CNES, was the first to sign a cooperation deal with the UAE and open an office in Abu Dhabi. Now French companies are helping build Emirati satellites. CNES president Jean-Yves Le Gall tells us more. There's a real desire on the part of the Emiratis to develop a space policy. So it's a very complete program with telecommunication satellites, Earth observation satellites, strategic satellites, a Mars mission, the astronauts, and the Emiratis decided to make CNES a strategic partner. What advantage does this kind of cooperation have for CNES? CNES will celebrate its 60th birthday soon, while the Emirates are a lot more recent. But it's a win-win situation, because they've a very innovative approach, and on our side we can share our experience with them. So in a way, it's a snapshot of the modern world, where the new space actors and the more traditional players work together to develop space activities. The UAE has deals with the other big space agencies too, with the Emirati astronaut candidates being trained and supported by NASA, ESA and Roscosmos. The Emirates has also invested in Virgin Galactic and may fly space tourists from the Middle East. Fire. Fire. Meanwhile, Mars is a big focus as the UAE builds a new research centre called Mars Science City and races to be the first Arab nation to send a spacecraft to the Red Planet in 2021. So there are a lot of projects underway at the same time. Is it too much? We went to Euroconsult for an expert opinion. Do you think that the UAE space programme is actually on really solid foundations, that they're not trying to run before they can walk? It's difficult to say. The, it's, it's quite, their model is quite unusual in which, uh, in the sense that they are leapfrogging a lot of the traditional steps a, a, a sort of an emerging space country would take. Um, and we see the traditional model is very much an incremental, gradual buildup of capabilities. Um, and so it's quite unusual to see a country that has a degree of expertise in space, but not a well-established reputation, to immediately uh, propose extremely ambitious um, uh, programs. The big gap is essentially what's going to be happening post-2021 um, because for the moment the country hasn't announced um, any subsequent steps uh, following the, the immediate short-term programs they've announced. Every golden age has a beginning. In 1667 the Observatory of Paris was founded with royal support and the goal to boost French maritime power. Today, the new UAE space sector is in its founding years, enjoying broad support from a government with deep pockets and grand plans. September 25th will mark an historic moment for the UAE as the first Emirati astronaut will be sent into space for an eight-day trip to the International Space Station. From thousands of hopefuls, the competition came down to two, with Haza al-Mansouri emerging the winner of this race into space. Before the year is out, this 34-year-old Emirati national will step on board the Russian Soyuz rocket headed for space. Al-Mansouri holds a degree in aviation sciences and has for years flown the UAE Air Force's F-16 fighter jets. His stiffest competition in recent months has been 37-year-old Sultan Al-Nayari. 
a telecommunications engineer with a PhD in IT. Beyond pressure chamber and centrifuge tests, the astronauts' preparation has included winter survival training at the Yuri Gagarin Center in Russia, requiring them to fend for themselves in the event of a crash upon re-entry in a remote ice-cold forest. The UAE astronaut program is the first of its kind in the Arab world and falls under the remit of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. The center is also responsible for the development of the Emirates Mars mission, the Mars Hope Probe, an expedition to reach the red planet's orbit by 2021 to gather atmospheric data, and the Mars 2117 vision, which aims to build a human colony there. Salam al Mari of the Space Center, who says that now is the perfect time to send Emiratis into space, explains why it was important to encourage more students to enter the sector to establish the UAE as a regional hub for space activities. We want to see more graduates from the region going into STEM fields. We want more engineers, we want more scientists, we want more uh, young men and women going into these fields because we believe that if you're going to build a knowledge-based economy, if you're going to build an economy that will uh, be a productive economy from an engineering perspective, you'll be able to develop technologies, then you need to get people going into these fields. During the upcoming mission, Almari says that Al Mansouri will conduct research in areas including the effect of zero gravity on the human body. The Emirati mission was originally scheduled for April, but was pushed back to September due to the mid-flight failure of a manned Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft last October. Two minutes after liftoff, a booster failed to cleanly separate from the launch vehicle, resulting in an emergency abort of the mission and a ballistic re-entry for the crew, who eventually parachuted to safety in Kazakhstan. Almari spoke of the inevitable hazards linked with any type of space venture. If you see uh, the astronauts an hour later coming back from that failure, as if they just uh, gone on a road trip, that shows you that the Soyuz uh, capsule is very robust, it's very safe, uh, it's been going for a very long time, the Russians know it very well, and seeing that they came out of that rocket explosion the way they did, I think that gives us more confidence that this system is very robust, it can, it can really keep astronauts alive, and it did. There's always risk associated, I don't have fears, but I think uh, uh, you prepare for the worst and you hope for the best. And that's what we're doing. Just ahead of the announcement of which cosmonaut would be boarding the UAE's pioneering spaceflight, Inspire caught up with both hopefuls to find out how they were preparing for the trip of a lifetime. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on Inspire Middle East. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you. Haza, let me come to you first. Both of you want to be the first Emirati to race into space. Has that affected your friendship in any way? For us, uh, me and Sultan, we built really a very uh, solid uh, relationship. And we are looking uh, forward uh, to make this uh, mission happen because it's a national mission. And also to be the uh, first uh, ambassador to the International Space Station to present not only the UAE, but uh, the Arab region. Paint the picture for me. What will be an average day in space for you? Very busy schedule. We'll have a lot of uh, uh, scientific experiments. Uh, we'll do a lot of tours. Uh, this time we'll be in Arabic to the uh, to the Arab region uh, um, to bring them closer to the space uh, uh, industry. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, good ambassadors uh, on board the International Space Station. Now, space missions are expensive. So what's the payback in investment terms for society? How will we see the results of this mission trickle down to key industries in the UAE? If you follow the history of space, it's always the way back to the space in different uh, regions, different fields, uh, medical, uh, economic, and everything. Uh, so in uh, our uh, region here in UAE, our leadership uh, is uh, focusing on making uh, UAE economy based on knowledge and invention and uh, uh, knowing about the space more. Uh, so there is a way back uh, in uh, generation in the youth. Uh, Hopefully, it will uh, give us uh, more scientists and uh, more passion about the space. The countdown has begun. In what ways have your physical and psychological regimes, your, your training, has it intensified? Uh, we've been ready all the time, but uh, eventually uh, getting closer towards the, uh, the big day. Uh, we will have uh, a very complex training um, uh, with the uh, crew, probably uh, uh, a Russian cosmonaut and uh, American astronaut as well. So we'll be working busy uh, on board the uh, Russian segment uh, in the simulators, doing all the uh, 
required tasks. During your training in Russia, you've come across many seasoned and veteran astronauts. Tell me, what was the best piece of advice that they've given you? Um, I think uh, the best advice was uh, to be uh, yourself, to act, act naturally and to uh, believe in, uh, in, in your case, which is reaching space, uh, spreading the ent enthusiasm among uh, youngsters. Impressively, you learnt Russian to advance your training. Tell me, how did it have an impact? Uh, Kanishna. It is, of course, in uh, Russian. And uh, it's uh, really accelerating our uh, uh, digesting the materials more. Uh, because, uh, uh, as we know, that uh, the Soyuz uh, rockets uh, or uh, Karabr itself or uh, capsule, uh, the only language uh, we need to know in that uh, uh, capsule is the Russian language. Uh, because the checklist, the procedures, we will conduct all the buttons in Russian. And uh, your life is uh, a mistake, so you have to know it. We wish you the very best of luck. Thank you for speaking to Inspire. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. Thank you. Well, that's all that we have time for this week. We very much hope that you enjoyed the show. And don't forget, you can catch all of our episodes online at yourinnews.com. Before I jet off, let me leave you with some social media posts that some might say are out of this world. Saud from the UAE posted this photo of baby Suhaila dressed as an astronaut, saying that guiding young minds in the world was key to a bright future. And Iraqi engineer Diana, who hopes to inspire Arab youth to strive in STEM fields, took to the controls of a model space vehicle. <laughs>